Pine Ride in Moto2 over his rival, Josh Grant. But the two riders chasing Villapoto in the points saw their seasons unravel. Austin Stroop first crashed out of Moto1, and then Moto2. Two DNS put a major slice in his championship plans. Brian Dungey's day also ended early when he crashed out of Moto2 on the opening lap. But as the series descends on Redbud, all riders will be on hand to give Villapoto another run. Round six, AMA Motocross Lights is next on speed. The AMA Toyota Motocross Championship presented by FMF. It's the Monster Energy Kawasaki Motocross National at Redbud. Round two of the Monster Energy Triple Crown of Motocross. Hi everybody, I'm Ralph Shaheen alongside multi-time champion Jeff Emig. Aaron Bates is here with us as well as we get set for another round of competition with the Motocross Lights and a big crowd on hand ready to enjoy a day of motocross. Oh, uh, great fans up here in Michigan. They all are screaming, Red Bud. And Ryan Villapoto is gonna get here's his name yelled quite a bit today as well. Here's a look at the points with five of the 12 rounds in the books. Ryan Dungey trying to give chase with Villapoto building on his lead. Well, let's head down for progressive free race report with Aaron Bates. It's 100% confirmed that the number 338 of Jason Lawrence will not be racing here at Redbud this weekend. He was arrested for disorderly conduct on July 4th here at the track, and you're already aware that he was on probation for the incident that took place at Texas. I spoke with the AMA regarding this incident earlier this afternoon. They can't comment on anything at this point, but I did speak with the manager, Chris McLemoy of Yamaha Troy, regarding the suspension and what's going to be announced. There will be a statement released sometime next week regarding the suspension, but go to speedtv.com for further announcements. Jeff, you're taking all this with Jason? Well, it's unfortunate. You know, he's he's been going down a, a really bad path here uh, the last few months, and hopefully this is bottom for him, and he makes some changes in his life and in turn will make some changes in his racing career and put him back on track where Yamaha and everybody else at Yamaha Troy wants him to be. An incredibly talented rider. Hopefully things get straightened out and we get Jason Lawrence back to racing soon. Brian Villapoto, meanwhile, looking to grab a championship. His teammate Austin Stroop not here, not feeling well. Not feeling well, yeah. He's out with an illness. Haven't confirmed what it is, but he definitely has been on fire. Had two bad motos and now being sick, so championship pretty much over for him. There's the Honda race format. 40 riders lining up in the gate for two motos, 30 minutes plus two laps. Top 20 riders scoring points, and of course that highest point total decides our overall winner. All right, Jeff, what do you need to know as you get set to go racing here at Red Button and you're in the gate? Uh, the track is in primo condition as you take a look at the Suzuki starting grid. Villapoto, of course, on top, but I'm telling you, the track owners here at Red Bud focus so much on the actual racing surface. They brought in some more sand. They're always changing it up. I mean perfect. Last year, they overwatered it a little bit, but this year, it's going to be awesome. The lines and, and the riders really, really like this, uh, this uh, surface here. Two of the top five riders not here this weekend as we get set to go racing from Red Bud. Couple of KTMs out front. 57 is Sipes jumping out to the early lead. Ryan Sipes. Boy, he's shown some speed this year, Jeff. Oh, and Davalos, his teammate, has been on fire lately, too. Both of these KTM riders really have stepped it up in the last few weeks, and you got to think that that's because of their training program and their dedication to that, their fitness, and also the work that they're doing with the MDK KTM team as far as the bike setup, chassis, engine, suspension. They really have, have been fired up here for this first moto at Red Button. Well, that's a monster jump right there, isn't it? Massive. It's so much fun. You fly up over the top of that. The riders, I think, well, I know, I mean, I obviously enjoy racing here. Anybody that followed my career, this is my favorite place to race on the National Motocross Circuit. But as you take a look here, just in the opening lap, you can see all the all these gnarly ruts. Just the the layout of the track is just, it, it is the, the funnest track on the circuit. 
Trey Kennard getting a pretty good start in here too. He's sitting in third, right behind Davalos. Trey Kennard's been a little bit hot and cold this year. He had a, uh, a race where he missed uh, the whole race, but since then he has came back just with a vengeance. And take a look at the start here. You got Davalos on the left and Sipes there nabbing the whole shot. Both riders were there to the first turn actually first and just nudged everybody else out. I thought Davalos was gonna tuck that front wheel there for a minute. Well, it's it's really loamy in that first turn, but over the years they really have widened that turn out and made a nice radius there to where that it's uh, a whole lot safer than what it used to be. Davalos still trying to fend off Kennard and Villapoto right there on the green Monster Energy Kawasaki. And I think Villapoto has it. You notice he had to come to a complete stop and that left-hander takes the outside here, just flies around Kennard. Boy, look at the speed on that green number one. And, and how about the amount of bike links that Villapoto put on Kennard? Oh, now he gets Davalos. Takes no time at all, really. He just reeled him in and blew right past him. Didn't spend much time setting him up at all. But haven't you just felt that in the last two or three races that Villapoto finally has his confidence and his swagger back that he had last year? He lost over the winter time with the injury. Now Villapoto is back and he is so strong and so focused, it's unreal. He is uh, he is just on rails again here at Redbud in the first moto. Well, we spent a lot of time talking about it during the Supercross season, how Ryan just did not look like the Ryan Villapoto we had gotten accustomed to seeing at all in the beginning. Uh, the Supercross Lights East Coast portion of the season. But once he got on track about halfway through there, it really started to look like he was finding his rhythm again. And now, ever since we've gotten to the outdoor season on the motocross tour, Jeff, he's been unstoppable. Well, and that definitely has to do with confidence. As, as you see, Ryan Sipes, who obviously lately feels great on the bike, looks great, his confidence is high, out front here leading this moto, but You've mentioned to me before, Ralph, that, that you that when it comes to Supercross and Motocross racers, that you've never seen more mental individuals and, and mentally. Where Whoa! Sipes makes a big mistake. And big he mistake. On. He gets back on, but he loses the lead. Oh, so tough to give up the lead, especially the number one, because you know once he's out front, he's just going to check out Sipes. What he can do right now is try to. Put that lasso around Villapoto and watch his lines. Here's, see, Sipes misses his line. He wanted to land just to the right and go where Villapoto did, yeah. Now he has to find a good area oh. right, right here. Watch him kind of, just kind of bunny hops off of that because you definitely want to get over those banners. They get caught in the rear wheel, possibly on the brake side. Then he end the moto. But follow up on what you were saying, uh, on what we were talking about, how you think of motocross riders, they, gain and lose their confidence so quick. Absolutely, without question. All racers are mental in one stretch or another, but motocross, supercross guys, boy, they can do it to themselves real easy. We'll be right back. To the AMA, Toyota Motocross Champions Racing is a non-stop adrenaline rush. Stay on top of it all with SpeedTV.com. Get the latest motorcycle racing news, results, and the in-depth commentary you crave. It's online and all in one place. SpeedTV.com, your online motorsports authority. Back to the racing action here at Red Bud Track and Trail in Buchanan, Michigan. Trey Kennard running in second on the 48 bike, battling with Ryan Sipes who held the lead and now has slipped back to third. Kennard really pushing hard here, carrying a lot of momentum. Has found some great lines here, worked his way past Davalos and now Sipes. Watch how this, that turn, see Sipes missed his line right there, and look how much time he dropped. That was a good six or eight bike links just by missing that one rut. And I'll tell you, when you're dialed in here at Red Bud, you can absolutely fly. And when you're not, it, it, makes it, for, it makes for a very long day. Yeah, when we saw when Sipes went off course, that it looked like Villapoto almost was gonna crash. And Nico Izzy coming along. Izzy bombing that jump, just over jumps. Takes the position from Sipes, so aggressive to just let it all hang out. And Sipes tries to retaliate, can't quite make it stick. Izzy, another rider who has gained so much confidence. Watch Izzy here on the left. He's just behind Sipes. Sipes gets on the brakes. Izzy doesn't. 
just wow. flies out. Watch him land, just completely bottoms out the Suzuki. And the Michigan native almost landed on top of Sipes. Well, he was really letting it go. Here's Jake Moss running in 11th position. The Australian rider, that's Ryan Dungey right behind him on the Suzuki, number 28. And the rock star Makita rider giving Jake Moss a handful here today. Well, and if you look across the top of your screen, that's the, the rider positions. I see Dungey was in about 22nd or 23rd after the first lap. Now he's already worked his way up trying to get close to the top 10. Look from that one shot there, it looks like they're gonna jump right into the trees, doesn't it? Yeah, and it, it, it is great to see Dungey back racing because he took a very hard hit up in Colorado. Moss, on the other hand, has put in some strong rides Dungey, as of late. Dungey trying to get inside, he's got him because they come down the hill. Oh, and then he bobbles. Oh, oh and so does Moss. And now Dungey fires back around the outside. And it looks like Ryan's gonna take the, the position away. And Moss just lost his concentration for just a little bit. Oh, and now Dungey definitely solidifies that position. But Moss, you know he had to get a little bit of his concentration off when he touched wheels, started thinking behind him, and then exiting the turn, lost his balance to the left side. Andrew McFarland sitting in sixth. Taking a look at McFarland there. Trying to work his way up through the field. Josh Grant running in seventh. The Geico Power Sports Honda rider. This being the, the best ride of, of the year for McFarland by far. His starts have suffered and we've just seen him run back in the 10 through 20 position. But now here today at Redbud, got it going in the first moto and that's so important carry that confidence over into the second moto, hopefully. I think Grant giving him a pretty good run here. Look at the mulch here though, Ralph, I'm telling you. The racing surface here, July 4th weekend, holiday weekend, and there is just so much excitement in the air. I just love coming here. The fans of Red Bud are right there with the best of them. And the fact that it's holiday weekend, everyone's out, you know, getting a little crazy. This first moto, when you come around the first lap here, opening moto, opening race moto of the weekend, the fans really let the riders know just how happy they are to be here. Ryan Villapoto pretty happy to be here. He's leading it here in moto number one at Red Bud. Name the time with motocross series is in Michigan this week. Red Bud is the name of the racetrack. Ryan Villapoto is the name of the leader. Andrew McFarlane on the green Kawasaki trying to hang on in front of Josh Grant. Boy, Grant gets inside. And then stretches out that step down tabletop. Nailed it. Josh Grant working his way through the pack here. Really showing a lot of speed. Pumped up after that great finish in Colorado. Well, so much of this sport is all about your mental state, Jeff, as we've talked about over the years and today as well. And with Grant feeling it right now, and as you said earlier, if you feel it here at this racetrack, it can make all the difference in the world of your performance here. Well, and I've always thought that Red Bud here marks kind of the halfway point, if you will. And if you've got it dialed in here, it's real easy to carry that momentum on through to, to, to the finish of the series. And so right now, Josh Grant back after some injuries, Contract year for Grant also, moving up to the big bike class for next year. So definitely showing his best stuff, if you will, here in these last couple of rounds. Good look at Martin Davalos too, who's having a pretty good run here on the KTM number 577. This track goes through changes in the layout each and every year. They keep it fresh for the riders. Like I said, Tim Ritchie's always trying to prepare the very best racing surface for these guys. Huge tabletops like right there, this huge step up double. This is awesome, the riders can just lay it out. Look at Grant there, just fly over that. Over jumped it just a tad. But I tell you here at Red Bud, these, like that inside turn there that Grant just had, look, he just nailed it, pulled up on the back. So it's the jump, the turns, the fact that it's deep, loamy soil, and there's a lot of racing lines. 
that's what makes it one of the best tracks of the season. And those fans. As you get a good look at the crowd, too, as we work our way around this racetrack, just packing the hillsides here in Michigan. And I think this was actually meant to be a double, but these guys are going 1-1 one, one through that. That's, that's that single single where Izzy made the pass on Moss. Here's Cran again. Up oh, problems for Mike Brown. The Boost Mobile Yamaha rider. Looks like he's out of moto number one. Nico Izzy sitting up in third, the Michigan native, trying to impress the home crowd. Izzy just made his way past Sipes. Kentucky boy just south of here. Izzy impressing all the native Michigan fans, the Michigan Mafia. He would be the youngest member now, moving up into the professional ranks. There's been some great riders come out of Michigan, or even, even close to here. Michael Rocco technically yep. wasn't from Michigan. He's from Indiana, but uh, still one of the local boys. Jeff Stanton, of Stanton, course, of course. Bowen. Nick Way. Nick Way. And I mean, why would you not love motocross here when, when you have facilities like this uh, you know, I live on the west coast of California where the tracks are pretty hard packed. It's just not as much fun to ride as what this here would be. I would ride every day still if I could, if I lived out, out back of here. Here comes Sipes right alongside of Izzy. And these two go bar to bar in mid-flight. Wow. Sipes on it here through the sand whoops. Boy, Izzy. Look at Izzy coming back though, Jeff. This inside line's pretty good. Is he to the inside? Sipes possibly setting up to do the triple step up here. Out in the parking lot. And we go back to the front. Ryan Villapoto on the number one. Trying to do something you did, Jeff. Win three races here at Red Bud. We'll see if he can pull it off. We'll be right back to Red Bud. Red Bud in Buchanan, Michigan. Ralph Shaheen, Jeff Emig, and Aaron Banks with you. And Ryan Dungey as well, who's currently running in eighth place right now, but working his way up through the field, Jeff, after a bad start out of the game. He definitely was outside of the top 20. Up into the top 10 is a pretty good ride for him. He did, he's not going to be happy with that, though, because this is a rider that really believes that he can challenge for the lead. That he can challenge Villapoto. As we take a look at a great battle here, between a couple of Australian riders, and it's Reardon getting around the outside of Metcalf. Reardon on the 122, the Honda, Metcalf on the green Kawasaki. And the interesting thing for Reardon, this being his first season here in the U.S. after being champion in Australia, is this is his first time that he's coming to these racetracks. Other riders, even, even as an amateur, you might have ridden this place. And so, you, you know, you have a little bit of that knowledge stored up of how the track works out. And, Reardon's had a great time, he said, learning these tracks, but he definitely feels that he's been at a slight disadvantage, you know, being his first time here. Taking a look at the rider out of Oklahoma, Trey Kennard, running in second. Jeff, how did you approach a racetrack that you had never seen before? Were you wide open? Wide open, is that the best <laughs> way to do it? No, you just have to methodically pick your way through it. It's always good to, to try to when you go out for the qualifying practice, the latch on to the guy with the number one play, the guy, you look through the results the last couple of years, the riders that have been good at this event, and, uh, and, and try to find, you know, their lines that they're using. Now, Trey Kennard here, you see him way on the outsides of almost every turn. That's the lines he wants. He's trying to find the smooth lines, as is Villapoto. Everybody would like to find Villapoto's line. Problem is they can't stay with him long enough to see it. And I spent some time with Villapoto's trainer, Randy Lawrence, who's a good good friend of mine. We've been friends for a couple of decades, and I flew back from a race with him, and he had some really great things to say about Villapoto and just, just the transition that he's had to make this year um, with the injury and uh, things in his personal life and how he has handled that and also how it's affected how they train together and that they really work good together that he knows when he has to really press Ryan and get more out of him or when he knows to back off and say, okay, today will be a light day. Take care of 
you know, your stuff off the track, off the bicycle, whatnot. So just such a successful uh, combination is Ryan Villapoto and Randy Lawrence, and they have proved it week in, week out, all summer long. We are on the last lap of moto number one, and Ryan Villapoto working his way to the checkered flag. Final corner, Villapoto hears the horns and sees the checkered flag. He wins moto number one here at Red Bud. Trey Kennard making his way to the line. He'll finish second. There's Trey. He's going to be very happy with that finish. That was a great ride for the 48. Very solid performance by the Honda rider. Here's a look at our Toyota Trucks unofficial results. Ryan Sipes had the lead early on, fell back to fourth, ends up working his way back to third just in front of Nico Izzy. Here's Ryan Sipes with Aaron. It's been a long time coming for Ryan Sipes, his very first podium at an outdoor national. And not only that, but you ended up getting the whole shot as well. What made the difference here so far? You know, I just keep on believing. I, uh, you know, I think the main thing is I've been healthy for a while and I keep building on that confidence, building on the confidence. My bike's great. You know, I'm stoked with the bike and the tracks have been awesome. This is uh, the first year I've been here since 05. So it's been a lot of fun. It's brand new to me and I'm just pumped. I'm, I'm having fun. Congratulations, could be the first of many. Thanks. Stay on top of the action, get green alerts from Speed Mobile. You want the absolute latest news and results? Get them right on your phone. Just text KX to 77333 on your mobile to get free motorcycle racing text alerts. Speed green alerts presented by Kawasaki. Here's Trey Kennard. We took a little bit of time off after a crash in Texas last weekend at Lakewood, came back strong, but Trey, you're on a roll. What's making the difference now? I uh, mean, I don't know. I don't know. I just took a little bit of a break from my head and uh, kind of try to get a clean slate and and uh, really just find out what my problems were and the biggest things were the start and that was my first in the top five start all year so you know hopefully I can get some more and, and do some good. Congratulations on a great moto and good luck in the second moto. Thanks a lot. Well Ryan Villapoto didn't get a great jump out of the gate but he did get the lead into the top step of the podium. Here he is with Aaron. Well, Ryan Villapoto is looking to do what only one other man has done, Jeff Emig, and that is three overall Red Bud victories in a row. Ryan, does that give you any extra drive this weekend? Yeah, it'd be something cool, another thing in the record books. And, uh, you know, track's looking good today. It's, uh, it's really ruddy and pretty tough. So, um, you know, it's going to take a good start at the second moto and stay out of trouble, and um, you know, just can't thank everybody enough. Well, we'll be right back to see if he can do that. Moto number two is coming up next on Speed. Moto number two, and let's start by checking in with Aaron Bates for progressive pre-race reports. The number 122 of Dan Reardon continues to get his feet wet here on the outdoor national tracks in America. He had his personal best finish last weekend at Thunder Valley in Lakewood with a 7-7 for five overall. But this weekend, a special weekend, 10 of his family and friends, close relatives showed up all the way from Australia, family members that he hasn't seen in over eight months. For some people, they say it would be a slight distraction and a little bit of extra pressure on his shoulders, but he says he's appreciating all the support, and so far, Redbud is his favorite track thus far. That's great to have the folks show up like that, cheer you on a little bit. Yeah, and, may, and maybe part of that uh, that boost for that first moto is he got a little Vegemite in it. Maybe they brought a little <laughs> extra up, right? Yeah, might have. Might have. In the gate, ready to go with Moto2 for the motocross light. Davalos on the inside. Now he's gonna get the whole shot. He could have had the whole shot at moto number one, although he really bobbled in that first corner. But Jake Moss, another Australian, he pulls the tear off. Is he gonna hold second or is Villapoto gonna sneak by? Well, Villapoto's gonna sneak by eventually, that's for sure. Moss is holding tough though. Here comes Villapoto up the inside. And he's gone. Now the track's rough. First moto, the track was smooth, just like silk out there with perfect lines. First moto, the motocross class would have already ran. Now they've thrown down some water, so there's going to be a couple of wet spots, a couple of slippery spots you see here on the outside, and a lot more bumps. And the ruts and these turns are going to be way deeper than what they were the first moto. 
Davila is doing a pretty good job. There's a lot of that water on the inside through there, Jeff. That's why the Davalos is in such a great position here. So important to get the whole shot in the second moto. See Davalos way up by the banners, just scooting by, missing all the bumps. But these riders that are third, fourth, fifth, buried back in the pack, this is when you start pulling some tear-offs heavily on the first lap. Filipato diamonds off the corner, cuts back inside. And boy, that was a great line through there. Just apexed it perfectly. That's the same line that he was taking in the first moto. Continues on. You see Villapoto pull the tear off now, clear the goggles. Get the head down and go. Yeah. He definitely will do that. But let's see if anybody can stay with him this moto. Kennard setting in third place now. Oh! Almost tucks the front end. Kennard with the second in the first moto has the opportunity. If he can beat Villapoto, he will win the overall. Kennard riding with a lot of fury here this weekend. First thing he's got to do is get around Davalos and do it quickly because you know Villapoto is going to start to pull out. And remember, in the first moto, Kennard ran a lot of outside lines just like he is right here and found some extra speed, some great passing points, but he's going to have to reel in Villapoto which is a very tough thing to do. Well, Andopoulos isn't making it easy just getting into second at all. ATM rider very focused and hanging in there. Davalos has been riding exceptional lately. Has, has, has been very strong on the bike, has looked great with his technique. I think what he's, oh, here comes Kennard on the inside. Well, they switched up lines. Davalos went to the outside, Kennard to the inside, and it pays off as Kennard comes right up alongside, gets a wheel in front of him, and now completes the pass. What I was saying, what Davalos needs to do is get out of his comfort zone a little bit, because you can see Kennard is letting it hang out. Villapoto, of course, rides in, in that sort of fashion every time he's on the bike. He really pushes the edge. And for Davalos to run with our two leaders, that's what he's gonna have to do. He's gonna have to get out of his comfort zone right now. You know, Jeff, when we first saw Villapoto arrive on the scene in, in his riding style, a lot of folks said it's a mini version of Ricky Carmichael because he rides with that foot off the peg style that Ricky used. Is he still riding that way? Is he looking more like Carmichael? Or is he developing more of his own style as time goes on? Well, I think that he's developing his own style, but when you're a rookie, your first year guy, you're still trying to develop your fitness. Let's take a look at the whole shot here coming across the stripe. It's Davalos all the way. Getting back to Villapoto, when he was a oh, and the triple step up. Boy, that was an impressive move there. Is that Dungey? It is. Trying to make the move on Josh Grant. Dungey on the outside line. Grant on the inside, they cut back across each other. And again, look at Dungey, just zigzagging his way, trying to find an opening. And he's gonna try to get it here. That time, Grant gets hung up on the inside, and Dungey's able to pull away. Wow, unbelievable line for, Dun uh, for Dungey. He is really on the gas here in moto number two. He knows where to pass because he had to pass a handful of riders upwards of 10 or 15 the first moto. Well, Dungey finds himself inside the top five already here in moto number two from Red Bud. Davalos. Very unique line coming down through there, Jeff. Yeah, just shaving the right side there, staying up out of the bumps and then dropping down into the rut. Cameron the throttle and exiting out. You know, Martin Davalos has won a Supercross lights race, but he's never finished overall on a podium at a motocross lights event. He's working on it here today. Great rides all day long, but he's kind of out there in no man's land right now, kind of riding by himself. Late in the, oh, he over jumps out a little. Late in the second moto here, or midway through the second moto, but as we get late, that's when the mental side of things, when you really have to keep it focused. Because you're just out there by yourself, as opposed to Metcalf and Moss and three other riders. They're, they're locked in a battle, so they're focused on the rider in front of them. Davalos, on the other hand, is just racing against the clock. He'll get his lap times each time he comes past the mechanics area. It's, it's tough, and it takes a lot of focus for that. Look over these big jumps here in Red Bud. 
Moss really hard on the brakes down here. Well, you got to get that bike to turn, don't you? Yeah, it does. And the inside line's all blown out there. There's just kind of a middle line now that the riders are taking. But you can see, still here in the second moto, the track prep absolutely perfect. Dungey applying the pressure here in the fight over third. He has caught Davalos. And you said, Jeff, running by yourself is so tough. Now he's got all the company he could possibly ever need. As Dungey comes along the inside and pulls it away. Yeah, that happened real quick. Dungey laying down some really fast lap times right now because Davalos was by himself and then out of nowhere came Dungey. And watch Dungey here to the outside, shifting gears, hammering the throttle all the way up. Boy, it's like getting launched, isn't it? Triple step up. See how they set up the grandstands here to the outside of that? Such a great spectator point here. That is probably the number one reason to come and watch a national here at Red Bud is the parking lot jump. It's a whole lot bigger than what it was back in my days, too. <laughs> Pretty impressive stuff here at Red Bud as Dungy sits in third. He's had to come from the back all day today. Nico Izzy ran very well in moto number one. Now he's battling with Reardon on the 122. They're fighting over sixth place. That would put Josh Cran right in front of them in fifth on the number 20 Honda. And I think what we could touch on, Ralph, is that point that we were talking about the rookies here. Reardon actually being a rookie to, these, to this series. And Izzy, he's, this is his first year as a pro, but is that your body develops like with Villapoto he maybe was as fast three years ago, but definitely did not have the fitness that he does today. And we'll be right back to see if Ryan Villapoto can hang on for the overall win. Continues here in the AMA Toyota Motocross Series, watching the battle for second. Trey Kennard on that Geico Power Sports Honda and Ryan Dungey on that rock star Makita Suzuki. Now, if Dungey can hang on to either one of these positions, Jeff, he'll finish third overall today. He's got to be happy with that after the hit that he took in Colorado last week. Knocked himself silly and rebounded it. And it always goes back to the fitness and strength, muscle mass is how your body recovers from those tough crashes like he had last week, and he has rebounded, put in two very strong rides so far here today. Now, if he stays in this position or gets Trey Kennard, he'll be on the podium. But if he drops a position, that's going to put him out of podium contention. Well, that's the thing about training for motocross and supercross. You have to be in great shape to be fast, but you also have to be in great shape just to survive. To survive and to recover. Oh, and somebody's stalled out on the inside. Kennard follows that line right in there, but you see just how deep the ruts are. These huge braking bumps here coming down into this. And then a loamy uphill here that just robs all the horsepower that the engine has to give out. So that's why having torque built into the engine, not only all out peak horsepower is so important is to pull the bike and the rider through these deep, loamy uphills and straightaways. By the way, that was the 862 of Ozzy Barbary. Seeing what it was like to run up in the top podium spots there for just a little bit when uh, Villapoto and Kennard and Dungey went by. I just like saying Ozzy. <laughs> you never go wrong with that. Ozzy rules, right? In my world, pretty strong. Well, in this world, it's Villapoto that's ruling, and you can do a Villo or something, but you might have to use your thumb to yeah. get all the letters on your on your knuckles, right? Villapoto just is so impressive these days. But I got to tell you, as you look at the future of this sport, and you look at guys like Villapoto and Kennard and Dungy, boy, great hands. Well, Villapoto is going to be out after this season, so. Who will be the heir apparent next season? You got to think that these remaining races here are so important for that. Gaining the confidence. I know with, with my days that I inched up on it in 90 and 91. I, I won a moto here in 91 and 92. I finally won an overall here. I went on to win the championship that year. But 
it doesn't happen overnight for everyone, and especially with a, a rider like Villapoto to come in and win in his rookie season, and then last year to win once again in, in one of the toughest championship battles that I've ever witnessed. And now to have a stranglehold on it in his third year, these riders like Kennard and Dungy can be happy to see him go and advance up to the motocross class. But it's gonna to be tough for Dungy to really put pressure and to force Kennard into a mistake. You gotta remember, Trey spent the entire Supercross Lights East Coast season battling with Villapoto. So he's had all of the tricks thrown at him. Yeah, both of these riders here were tested heavily throughout the East and the West Supercross Championship. And it's that type of victories that you have and those mental victories that now start to to become apparent that you have that strength. You've been there. You, you, you've had defeat. You've learned how to win and learned how to persevere through that type of stress and, and uh, pressure. And let's see here late in the second moto, which one of these riders can, can use that to their advantage, come up with the best position. Did you learn more from uh, overcoming things and getting a win or getting the the loss in knowing what not to do next time around? That That is such a tough question. Uh, that's a good question, but I've, I'd have to think, but I'll get back to you in a yeah, couple weeks. You know, weeks my, you know my number, you just call and send me a text. <laughs> Meanwhile, everybody's chasing Villapoto. He's gonna be tough to beat here today at Redbud. Name the time when the- To the final few laps here at Buchanan, Michigan. Ralph Shaheen, Jeff Emig, and Aaron Bates wrapping up another round of the Toyota Motocross Championship for the Motocross Lights class presented by FML. You see Kennard got a couple bike links now on Ryan Dungey, a little bit of breathing room here late in the second moto. And I think I can answer your question from before the break there. Whoa, look out. Rear Dan Reardon on the 122. White flag is out. Final lap for Villapoto. All right, Jeff, get back to the... Uh, well, I whole shot at the first moto and crashed with the lead on the first lap. And I finished the 13th, and I came back to win the second moto in a, in a pretty tough battle with Mike Morocco. So I think that it's those moments like that where, where you know that your fitness is there, that your speed is there, and then you make a mental mistake and it forces you to elevate your concentration and your focus. And it definitely takes that desire and determination level and just maxes it out. So, so defeat, yeah. Here's Dungey still working on Kennard. Kennard on that Geico Power Sports Honda and Dungey on the Rockstar Makita Suzuki. And when you're so close to the glory and when you work hard week in, week out, all the training that you put in, in the gym, on the bicycle, running, the motos that you put in. Both these riders will have done hundreds of laps this week just preparing. Oh, and Dungey makes a little mistake. He's gonna give a little edge to Trey Kennard, a little bit of breathing room. But it's that type of time that you spend at home with your mechanic when you're practicing and you're on the lap time board and you're forcing yourself to keep your lap time at that spot each and every day it's that type of work that manifests itself here late in the second moto. Boy, Dungey's really pushing hard here now. And Kennard's made a few bobbles. And look at Dungey trying the outside so hard on the brakes through that section there, and it's so bumpy. I'll tell you what, oh, I... Kennard makes a little mistake. Dungey to the inside. Kennard's just riding a little looser, Jeff. He's really on that ragged edge, hanging it over the line and he's just able to stay on top of it. I tell you, I'd much rather be in Dungey's spot right now, even though Trey Kennard has the position. Dungey just trying to pressure Kennard into the mistake. Let's see if Dungey has a line. Maybe the triple step up on the outside. And, that's, and Dungey's been flying that triple too. But Let's what, see if that makes a difference here. But what he's gonna have to do is be good out of this turn, which he was okay, he's not quite close enough. Now he's gonna have to absolutely bomb the outside. There he goes to the outside. Oh, but he didn't get a good run in there. Slight and, uh, he didn't get out of that corner very well at all. Uh oh, oh, something's wrong with the bike. Dungey's got a problem right near the end. Unbelievable tough luck for Ryan Dungey. Meanwhile, 
Villapoto is on his way to sweeping both motos and winning here in Redbud. He becomes only the second rider to win three Redbud races in a row, alongside my partner Jeff Emig. And Kennard takes second. Dungey sees a fine finish go away and tosses his helmet into the crowd out of frustration. What a tough finish for Ryan Dungey. And he had 20 hard fought points that he just gave up. Wow, so close to the finish and being locked in that battle where his heart rate was maxing out. He had some passing lines, couldn't make it happen. And Kawasaki has now won here four years in a row. We'll be right back to Red Bike. In Chicago. Network premiere of Wrecked Life in the Crash Lane. Ride with Chicago's toughest family of towers. Find out why cleaning up the mess isn't for the faint of heart. Wreck premieres Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on speed. Now well, the fans are packing up and leaving. As we take a look at our Toyota trucks, unofficial results. Martin Davalos ends up taking third in moto number two. Let's head to the podium. Here's Aaron with Martin. Well, Martin Davalos makes his way up onto the podium, his very first overall podium at that. Martin, you've worked so hard for this. What does this moment mean? I know, I've been working so hard for this, you know, I, uh, I had a little thing going at the beginning of the season with my long and, you know, I got, uh, uh, it wasn't nothing serious and here I am, just giving it all, training day after day, working with Colleen, my parents are helping me right now, so, you know, I just feel really motivated, my team is behind me 100% and, you know, I've been putting the laps out there in practice and I felt strong today and, uh, you know, it, it, it worked for me, Ryan crashed last lap and I took the chance. And it worked for sure. Here's a look at the Toyota Trucks overall results. Martino take third overall. Sipes had a third and a 20, gets 10th. We go to Trey Kennard now with Aaron. Trey Kennard made his way up to the podium for the first time this season. Trey, this one did not come easy to you though. Take us through your crash. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was about 15 minutes in and I uh, just was trying my best to stay with Ryan. He was gone and I and, uh, just hit a braking bump and kind of tumbled over the bars. but. Luckily, kept it running, was only down for about 12 seconds, and uh, Dungey was behind me the whole race, and man, it was crazy. We're halfway through the season. Here's a look at the points. Villapoto, fairly healthy lead over Ryan Dungey. As we head down to meet Ryan, who's with Aaron. Three wins in a row for Ryan Villapoto, and he's that much closer to sweeping the Monster Energy Kawasaki Vans Triple Crown. Ryan, what is it going to take for somebody to ruin your domination streak? You know, it's, it could be myself. You know, it's gonna, you know, it's hard to be, get to be up there every moto, and I make sure you get that good start and no mistakes. So that's that's the biggest thing, um, probably myself. And uh, you know, we'll try to keep those mistakes minimal. And I uh, just can't thank uh, the team enough: Monster Pro Circuit, Kawasaki, Jeff Fox, Parts Limited, Toyota Escondido. Thanks, guys. Villapoto wins another one, Jeff. Yeah, he was dominant once again, and I'll tell you, it's going to be hard for anybody to get up into that number one spot, but if anyone can do it, it'd be number 48, Trey Kennard. He's on a roll also. Well, for Aaron Bates and Jeff Emick, I'm Ralph Shaheen. So long from Red Bud, and congratulations to Ryan Villapoto.